you grab your Bibles with me tonight and turn with me into Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, we're going to start in verse 7 and read to verse 9. And the title of the message tonight is The Awkward Doctrine. The Awkward Doctrine. And if you will stand with me in reverence to God's yeah. word as we read our text. Matthew chapter 18 and verses 7 through 9 it says, Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom, they come, the, by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life all for main, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Yeah. Lord, we thank you tonight for your word. We just pray, Lord, that you would illuminate our eyes of understanding tonight that you would uh, impart to us your wisdom, Lord, and your understanding. Lord, that you would increase our faith. Lord, that you would grow us up in the grace that you have so freely given. Amen. Lord, that teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously in this present world. Lord, we'll give you the honor, glory, and praise for all that you have done and, and that you continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I entitled this The Awkward Doctrine tonight because I believe what we are uh, going to learn about tonight, uh, I preached a little bit concerning this on Wednesday night, uh, but I believe what this is talking about here is separation. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus said, I came to send a sword. Yeah. Amen. And what Jesus, the work that Jesus does in our life is to separate us. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, for whom he did foreknow, he did predestinate to be conformed to the image yeah. of the Son. And that predestination to be conformed to his Son. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 through 10, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Yeah. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Yeah. So we have been ordained by God if we believe in Him and Jesus Christ. We have been ordained before the foundation Amen. of the world to be separated and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe that's what this is talking about. If thy, if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. You know, uh, how far are we to go in our separation? As far as the Spirit convicts us Amen. to go. Amen. Amen. And as the Spirit convicts us to separate ourselves more and more, we should not fight with the Spirit. Amen? We should not quench the Spirit. But we should listen and be humble and obey what the Spirit says to our hearts. And whatever it might be. And that the Bible says to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Yeah. And we know if the Spirit is dealing with us in a certain area about our separation unto God, we need to listen. Yeah. Right. But what offenses? He talks about offenses here. Woe unto the world because of offenses. What offenses have we become comfortable with? What things, what, what offenses have come into the world that uh, have been here for a while that God's people has become comfortable with? Have allowed, have, have you know, uh, uh, allowed to hang around? That's the question that I would like to, one of the questions I would like to ask because I think a lot of Christians have become comfortable with the offenses that are in the world today. Look with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 1. It 
It says, dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth the stinking savor. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. Yeah. It only takes a little bit of folly to send forth a stinking smell. Mm -hmm. God, I uh, remember one dad, my, one the time my dad preached a message about uh, your sin stinks. And it does, amen? <laughs> to God, your sin smells and it stinks. We are to be a sweet smelling savor to, of the Lord, amen? Yeah. And the only way to do that is by our sanctification. Only the way to do that is by our separation from the things of the world. But we let a little thing come into our life, a little folly come in. When we're in reputation uh, of, for wisdom and honor. In other words, we are children of the Most High. And we have been given a calling. Right. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate. And whom He did predestinate, them He also called. And them that He called, He also did... Uh, Glorify. And so we are called uh, to be saints, as mm -hmm. the Bible says. It's not as the Catholic Church does and you have to wait, you know, and, and be voted in as a saint. No, we're all called to be saints. Mm -hmm. We're all called to have a separation in our life to God. And that only takes a little bit of sin to mess that up. Look at Matthew chapter 6. Whom he called, he justified. That's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. And whom he justified, he glorified. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 6 and verses 19 through 24, it says, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for your treasures... Of for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your, will your heart be also. Amen. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. Mm -hmm. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Yeah. Talking about the light of the body is the eye. Mm -hmm. In other words, this is how the light that is in the uh, the room or in the world comes into our eyes and into our bodies that we perceive and are able to see the things that are around us. And he's using this as an example. That uh, if thy eye be single, you know with your eyes you're seeing a, uh, you're seeing a, a, a whole picture with both eyes. I mean, you can close one and close the other and see how they are aligned. And they were meant to be aligned. But what if you had one eye looking over here and one eye looking over there? It wouldn't be single anymore, would it? And it'd probably give you a headache trying to your, for your brain to try to process all the things that you're taking in. Because we weren't meant to do that. We weren't meant to have our vision uh, altered to uh, look in two different directions at the same time. We were meant to be single, to have our eyes focused right. on what we're looking at. Amen? And as he says, our treasure needs to be up in heaven, not on this earth. You can't have your focus on the treasure of this earth and have your focus on the treasure of heaven at the same time. Yeah. You can't serve two masters. You can't have uh, serve the Lord and serve the world at the same time. Or serve the flesh and the effects with the affections and lust at the same time that you're serving God. You have to give up those things. Amen? Amen. You must crucify the flesh with the affections and lust. Yeah. You must present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is our reasonable service. Yeah. 
And if we glory, as Paul said, I glory in the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. To whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Because, as Jesus said, we need to take up our cross, amen, and amen. follow Him. Amen. So we can't have double vision. We can't be double-minded, as the Bible says. Mm -hmm. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Yeah. Yes. We can't be comfortable with where we're at. Amen. We got to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling Amen. of God in our lives. We can't just stay, as Brother uh, Erling preached this morning mentioned a lot. You know, he got comfortable with sin, didn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. He got comfortable living in in the place that he was at. And I, I've often thought about that, and I don't know if I've ever preached it before. But you know what? So, uh, hit, hit Lot's downfall was that he separated from Abraham. Amen? <laughs> God's blessing was on Abraham. Yeah. And because their servants couldn't get along, they had to split up. They said, well, you, you pick out which way you want to go. And if I'd have been Lot, the best thing to do is say, you know what? My servants can be your servants. I just want to be where God is. Amen. Amen. But he didn't do that. He said, okay, I'll take this over here. You know, sometimes uh, we give up God's presence in our life because we can't get along. Yep. You know what? We need to let God. Amen. That's right. Get out of the way. Amen. Let God do what His work is going to do. And we say, all I want to be, amen, if all I am is a doorkeeper in the house amen. of God, that's what I want to be amen. because this is where it's at. Amen. Yes. As P uh, Peter said, to whom shall we go? Amen. Thou hast the words of life. Amen. Jesus said, will you leave me also? Where are we going to go? Amen. That's the attitude we need to have. Is because Jesus is our treasure. Amen. Amen. He should be where our heart is at. And He should be where our vision is focused on. Looking unto the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. 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 Look at Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 and verses 7 through 10 it says, Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Yeah. This persuasion cometh not of him that is call, uh, that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Yeah. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, offenses must come into the world. But that doesn't mean we have to put up with them. That's right. That doesn't mean we have to accept them. Amen? No. That means we need to stand up against them. Because by whom the offense come, he's going to bear his burden. He's going to pay for that offense. But we need to beware who we're listening to. Amen? Yeah. And who we're allowing into our lives to speak into our ears. Amen. And start listening to the Holy Spirit which God has given to Amen. us. Amen. And listen to the Holy Spirit above what man says. Amen. Let God be true in every man alive. Amen. Amen. And this is the authority on which we stand. That's upon. right. And if it's not in thus saith the Lord, then we need to leave it alone. Amen. 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 And if the Holy Spirit is convicting us about something that's in our life that we need to get rid of and separate unto God, then we need to do it. Don't even question it. And as uh, God said to Lot and his wife, don't even look back. Yep. Amen? Because we know what happened to Lot's wife when she looked back. The next question I want to ask is, how separated does God want us to be? You know, some people are more separated than others. But I think that we've come, uh, we see so, so many times that one person's separation is awkward to other people who aren't as separated. And they, they like to talk about them behind their backs and say, well, he thinks he's so uh, greater than everybody else. 
Why should we judge our brother? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Who Christ died for. Amen. Amen. If God, if, if He wants to be as separated as He's wants to be, why should we care? Amen. 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 We need to be focused on what God wants us to do. That's Amen. right. Amen. And people are awkward. You can start talking about, you can talk about football, you can talk about the weather, you can talk about anything. You start talking about Jesus and it gets awkward, right? Yeah. yeah. Because there's a separation there. Yeah. And, and, and so many people, so many Christians feel awkward about talking about Jesus. Yeah. And why is that? I'm going to tell you what. What, what did they, uh, Peter say? We can't help but speak yeah. of the things which we've seen and heard. Amen. Why? Because they had separated their lives unto the gospel. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Which is what we should do. Amen. Yeah. Is separate ourselves. And the Bible says that they became addicted, amen, amen. addicted to the ministry. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, you want to get high in the Lord, get addicted to the amen. ministry. Amen. Get addicted to telling people about the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. And I'm going to tell you, when someone gets saved and a sinner comes home, there is no greater high amen. Amen. than to see God work in someone else's life amen. as He has worked in yours. Yeah. Amen. That's how separated God wants us to be. Amen? And He leads us along. When a person's saved, we know that they're not automatically uh, separated as far as uh, things in their life. They have to learn. Amen? As Brother Tim was talking about this morning, about learning how to tie. Mm -hmm. Learning how to get to mission. And all these things that we have to learn. Why? Because we're babes in Christ. And we begin to grow in the grace of the Lord. And we begin to get stronger. And we get weaned from the milk. And we start being able to handle the meat of God's Amen. Word. And God continues to reveal Himself to us. It's called a relationship. Amen. Amen. That's where it comes down to. It's just not about religion. It's about a relationship yeah. with Jesus Christ. And the more we have that relationship with Jesus Christ, the more He's going to separate us from the world yes. unto Amen. Himself. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 14. Or starting in verse 14. And this is familiar scripture to us all, especially us to independent Baptists. Amen. We read this plenty of times. It says in verse 14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Billy Allen? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my right. people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. And will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Yeah. Yeah. Chapter 7 verse 1 says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness. All. Amen. Yes. He didn't say pick and choose which one's your favorite. No, he said that we need to cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Yeah. Amen. And what does the Bible say the fear of God is? To hate evil. Mm -hmm. Amen? <laughs> to hate evil. I've given this example so many times, but it's so true that if you love, you must hate. Yes. <laughs> If anyone that has kids, if you love your kids, you're going to hate drugs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? Yes. Because you know what drugs can do to your kids. Yeah. Anyone that loves his brother is going to hate sin. Mm -hmm. Because you know that sin brings nothing but death yeah. in a person's life. Right. Yes. It brings death to relationships, to marriages, to uh, families, to churches. 
Just as we read in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, just a little bit of, fo little bit of folly is all it takes. So if you love God and you love your neighbor as yourself, then you're going to hate sin. Amen? Amen. And that is the fear of God. Because why? Because we want to please Him. Amen. As was preached this morning. We want to be pleasing to God. If we're truly sincere in our hearts, that is. Yeah. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8 through 14 it says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Amen. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Yeah. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. And listen to this. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. You know what? Jesus said, ye are the light of the world. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. We are the light of the world. Why? Because we have the light of Jesus Christ that shines within us. And, and with that light, as He said, that makes manifest. He says, all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. Well, if Jesus is shining in our hearts, then guess what we're going to do? We're going to reprove the works of darkness yeah. because of the light that shines within us. Over in 1 John chapter 1, he said, if we say we uh, walk in the light or have fellowship with God and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Mm -hmm. You have to walk in the light, amen, as yeah. he is in the light. You say, what is the light? The glorious gospel of yes. Jesus Christ. The word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet yeah. and a light unto my path. Yeah. We're going to walk with Jesus. We're going to walk in His Word. Yeah. Amen. And the Word will separate you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Why? Because it's quick and powerful and yeah. sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing uh, asunder, dividing asunder, even the joints and the marrow. Mm -hmm. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. Yeah. Look at 1 John chapter 2. And as long as we are here on this earth, we're not, we're not through being separated. Right. <laughs> Amen. Right. right. Separation is just not a one or two or three time thing. No, separation is a continual thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. A righteous man falleth seven times yet gets up again. We are continually to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Continue to allow the Spirit to convict us. I tell you what, people have gotten strong against conviction, right? They've hardened their hearts and stiffened their necks to the point, I mean, they think they know it all already. Why study their Bible? Well, they studied it enough. They got all the doctrines down. In fact, they got a little booklet that has all the doctrines they believe written down. Why, why do I need to continue to study? Because God said to study. Amen. Yeah. To show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly yeah. dividing the word of truth. Yeah. God's not done with us yet. Yeah. Amen. If you're here, He's not done with you. Yeah. He still wants you to be separated unto Him. Today. There's no time, just as Paul said, I haven't arrived yet. <laughs> I haven't arrived yet, and none of us have. Mm -mm. Until the day Jesus comes back and we receive our new bodies. Amen. 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 And then we won't have to worry about temptation or sin or sickness or pain or death or anything else. But until that time, God wants us to continue steadfast unmovable, always abounding, yes. always abounding. That means always moving forward. Amen. Amen. Yeah. In the work of the Lord. First John chapter 2 and verses 15 through 17 says, 
Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. You know, a lot of people have checked out a lot earlier than what a lot of people thought they should. Yeah. Because they weren't doing the will of God. Yeah. That's right. And they like to say, oh, but brother, God has not appointed us to wrath. He hasn't appointed us to wrath, but you know what? He gave us a choice. Amen. Choose yep. you this day whom you're going to serve. Mm -hmm. yep. And you know what? With that choice comes blessing and cursing. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to choose to follow God, then He's going to bless you. Yep. But if you choose not to, don't think that God's a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. Amen. He told that to the Jews. Yep. He said, "Don't." I think John the Baptist said, Don't say within your heart we have Abraham the father. Yep. Because God's able to raise yeah. our children out of these stones on the ground. Right. Don't think because you're saved that everything's coming your way. You've got to stay in the will of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what, in the center of God's will, there's perfect peace. Amen. Amen. And I like the song the McCainies used to sing, God doesn't always calm the storm, but He'll calm you. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> God will work in your life if you're following Him. And if you're in the center of God's will, but you're, if you're not in His will, don't expect God to answer anything. Amen. 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 Just as uh, James chapter 1, I didn't have to, this written down, but it keeps coming back up to my mind, so we need to go over and read it. Amen. In James chapter 1, it says in verse... Well, let's start in verse 2. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work, worketh patience. Yeah. But let patience have her perfect work. What is patience? I've said this before. Patience is waiting on the Lord. Yeah. Amen? That's what patience really is. Yeah. Is waiting on Him. Let patience have her perfect work. That ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Amen. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Amen. But let him ask in faith, yep. nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Yep. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Yeah. You know what? If you even doubt in your heart, yeah. don't expect anything of the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. If you're not living by faith, don't expect God to move on your behalf. Yeah. Because God's going to work by your faith. Yeah. Right. Just as Jesus said so many times, by your faith be it unto you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's what He said. Yeah. So many times. He worked on the faith of people because they believed he moved. Amen. Amen. That's right. And as Abraham believed God, it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Yeah. And it wasn't just written for his sake. It was written for our sakes. Right. To whom the ends of the world have come. Amen. That if we will just believe God and trust Him. Amen. For it is impossible. Without faith it is impossible to please God. Amen. For he that cometh to him must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. How, God, how much does God want us to be separated? More and more every day. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. To continue to allow God to separate us yeah. by his Spirit yeah. through the Word of God. <clears throat> And as we read in 1 John chapter 2, love not the world. You know, it really comes down to our love. How much do we love our Heavenly Father? Yeah. Yeah. Because if we truly love Him as we ought to, then we're going to follow Him no matter what. Amen. Yeah. Hear my Lord, send me. And there's no buts behind that, is there? Uh -huh. Lord, hear my, send me. But wait, uh, you know, 
a couple of days. Or, Lord, let me get these things out of my life. Or, you know, I just, I'm, try, I'm having fun right now. Just wait till I get through having fun. Yeah. Lord, I'm working on some things. You can't work on anything. No. If God doesn't build the house, it's not going to get yeah, built. Yeah. Amen. Uh -uh. The builders build in vain. <laughs> the watchman watches in vain. Yeah. Amen. Because if God's not keeping the city, it's not being kept. Yeah. Amen. We need God first. Amen. And we need to love Him with all our heart, soul, and mind. Yeah. Look at Matthew chapter 22. chapter 22 starting in verse 35 it says then one of them which was a lawyer asked him a question tempting him and saying master which is the great commandment in the law and Jesus said unto him thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind yeah. this is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the promise. Yeah. That's where it's really at right there. Yeah. Amen. How much do we love God? And how much do we love our neighbor? Yeah. Because if we truly love God and we love our neighbor, then we're going to follow God. We're going to do what He wants us to. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Because we know there is a price. Yeah. Hey, well, there is a cause, as David asked. Is there not a cause? Amen. Yes, there is a cause. Amen. Amen. Look at 1 John chapter 5. <clears throat> First John chapter 5 and verses 1 through 5 it says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. Amen. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. For this is the love of God. That we keep His commandments. And get this. And His commandments are not yeah. grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Yeah. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah. I titled this the Awkward Doctrine. Because you know what? It just seems like people get awkward when you start talking about separation. Yeah. But the thing that they don't realize is it's all about separation. Man. It's all about separation. Yeah. Our greatest example, guess what? He left the throne of glory yeah. to be born in a manger, in a barn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he had nothing of his own. And he gave it all up for us. Man. Why would we expect, or why would we think he would expect anything less from us? Amen. That we would give it all up for him. You, know? you say, I have to give up everything. You know what? In your heart, you do. No strings attached. God has your heart totally and fully. Amen. Uh -huh. And then you can be like Job. You know? The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Amen. Blessed be the name. People have too much of a grip on the things that they have. You know what? Those things don't mean a, a hill of beans. Yeah. <laughs> they really don't. The house we live in, the clothes we wear, the cars we drive, if they all got taken away right now, where would our heart be? Yep. Amen. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. We ought to be brought to our knees, not in despair, but in saying, God, 
Blessed be your name. Man. Forever and ever. Yeah. Because you have blessed me far more than I deserve. Man. Amen. But if our heart's on him, that's that's how we can go through times of trials and tribulations yeah. without being moved. Man. Why? Because he's the rock yeah. of ages. Amen. 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 And if we're founded on the rock and our heart is upon him, and we love him and love the brethren and love our neighbor as ourselves, guess what? Our times aren't going to move us. We're still going to love. Yeah. You know that verse of scripture, because sin of uh, 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 iniquity abounds, the love of many shall wax cold. Yes. Let it not be named of one of the saints. Yes. Amen. We need to keep our love on fire for the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Look at Psalm chapter 139, and if you'll stand with me as we read. Psalm 139, starting in verse 23. says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. Amen. And lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Amen. That's what our service to the Lord is about. Amen. Giving our bodies a living sacrifice. Saying, Lord, hear me. Search me. Try me. Lord, forgive me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Amen. As the song leader and pianist said, Lord, we thank you tonight for your word. We just pray that you would use it in our hearts and lives. Lord, that we might become more separated unto you. Lord, that we would never get to the point where we're hardened against the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Lord, for we know we need that conviction. Lord, for uh, we need your uh, working power in our lives. Lord, we know only you can lift us up. Lord, that we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. Lord, we just place all these things in your hand. Forgive us where we fail you. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat>